Hello guys, just Mike here. Anyway, let's discuss maybe what your first clock should be like. You want to, if you're going to start working on these clocks, you want a cheap clock that's not going to make a difference. And let me show you one that I have for an example. So this clock, it's a small clock. And realistically, it's a cheap clock. I mean, it's still a nice clock. But the detail is, is it's in here, but it's not really carved. Uh, so the leaves really show some nice detail. It's, like I say, it's just a, a nice clock. It has a, let's see on here. Okay, this here is the type that you undo one side and it comes off. It's got the screws there. Of course, it says made in Germany, Cuckoo Clock, Manufacturer Company Incorporated. All that's fine and dandy, but not a big deal. I see this might have been stained over the eyes. That's easy enough to take care of. Just get a small screwdriver and rub it, and you can get that to come out. But that's not important right now. This one here just happens to work. Let me get some light on the subject here. Get the right chain to pull. See, he keeps cuckooing and it's stuck. There, we got him to close that time. Anyway, anyway, what makes it nice about this clock, it only has the cuckoo bird, it doesn't have the music. It's still a very nice cuckoo clock, but if you're looking at learning something about these clocks, I would stick with one that just has the cuckoo bird and not the cuckoo bird and the music. If that's all you have is already is a cuckoo bird with the music, the, so be it. If it's a really nice clock, I'd suggest to look for a cheap one. You don't, you don't even need all the parts here. It's idea of what's inside. Now this one here does say Germany. We got 40, 34 on here. More than likely what that is, is this is a regular 34 works, which is very common in most your cuckoo clocks. Here you got your gong. It does have the hole in the back so you can easily adjust this because you can still, still see the wire. And if you install this, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, the gong in there and you can listen how it sounds and push the wire down or, or pull the wire up the screwdriver a little, a little bit at a time to get the the right sound out of that. Now you can see this here is starting to come apart. I need to re-glue in there and then I'll probably go ahead and re-stain this so you won't even see that, in which it's the back of the clock so it's no big deal. Now on here too, it's got these doors that are just nailed on. This one's starting to come off, and I imagine you could nail it back on, or just tap it back in, or you can pop it out the screwdriver, straighten the nail so this will lay down flatter. There's a good chance just tapping it in, it's going to lay down where you want it to. So it's still setting up a little bit. It's not a heart attack, I'm just saying that's one thing that's on here. So anyway, looking in here, which you already heard, this clock cuckooed, so the bellows are still good. And they are the le leather be bellows. You can kind of tell because the skin or whatever it is they use in here has kind of a grain look to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do, yes, this thing happens to tick. Which is nice to find out just what it'll do. And that's pulling on it. Oh, I should uh, show you the rest of 
what came with this, which I don't even know what's in here. I know there's weights, and I'm going to guess this is a pendulum. So let me get this unwrapped and take a look. So it came with two pendulums. Or not pendulums. This is a pendulum. One pendulum and two weights. And these are the vintage weights. So it's kind of giving you a hint that this is an older clock because it has the wire coming uh, out of the weight itself. Now normally these are marked with uh, what the weight is. Not all of them have that. But I see a number on here. And I almost want to say turn it upside down. It looks like a 97. I'd imagine these are about a... Oh, I'd have to put it on the scale, but about a 250, 220, something like that. Wait, uh, the kilograms, I think they call it. I'm not into that kind of stuff. I just know that certain clocks on... I think it's called kilograms is what they're supposed to be. So anyway... Let's go ahead and take this thing apart and show you just how to get started. Your first thing you want to do, more than likely, is release the bird. And what I usually do is I try to get a screwdriver in here and pop that wire up to where you can get your thumb on it and finish bending it up. There, he's released. He's not going to go in because he got recocked to cuckoo again, evidently. So that doesn't make any difference. He's released. When I go to pull it out, i got to make sure this wire's falling back in instead of getting hung up here. And then the other is more than likely this is on here too tight to get it off by hand. Oh, yeah, I can't do it. So, yes, I do have the ones with the grips in here. And I try to be careful not to scratch it. Just squeeze a little bit and give it a turn. It's on there good. Let me... Sometimes I gotta do this. Put a dab of oil, clock oil in the center of that and for some reason that seems to help there we go so pay attention to these because on your vintage ones there's a certain way you need to put these nuts and washers and everything else and you should have yourself an empty container throw all of your parts in you should make sure the floor area is cleaned up around you too because nine times out of ten everything's gonna fall on the floor and you gotta be able to find it so this has the I, I'll call it a nut that uh, is pressed through the hole and it was pressed through once it was sitting at the 12 so that way your cuckoo the hands will be adjusted for the cuckoo bird already there's no need on taking that out if it happens to most of them aren't pressed in that well and if your time happens to be off or whatever when you get it usually you can carefully because these are fragile you can pop that out of there set it back on here set it down and bring the point to the 12 knowing that it already cuckooed and then press it down onto that nut and then possibly using the nut that was on top to finish pushing it down now this here our hand it doesn't make a hoot where it is it turns real easy this is wedged on there the shaft is a wedge shape and so to get it off just Twist it back and forth and lift up. And like I say, be careful because these, especially when they're really old, these will break on you. And then you have to go buy new hands, which are available 
on certain clocks you might have to do some different types of adjusting to make them work but so anyway we got the cuckoo bird undone we got this the hands off and now what I suggest is to uh, get these chains off and it's almost difficult on the ones that have the hook already clear up to the top but you I just bend them up a little bit. Let me get my tinier pliers here. It's nice to have some with small points. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it through. I can't get that piece of chain off. I don't think. Oh, it did. So I pulled it through. So this chain is actually in pretty good shape. It's normally they're really rusty. This one doesn't look bad at all. Besides it being tied up on the end, which I'll have to take my time and loosen the chain up. It's not like a string. You just have to kind of work it and eventually you'll get that through. So on the other side, means I was a cuckoo, I was able to get it to come out a little bit. And myself, what I do is I go ahead and grab it. I lift up on it so the chain can come out. On some of your heavier chains, they suggest you twist it over to the side, in which sometimes you're going to have to use the pliers to hold the other side too to get the twist. Then you t just twist it back once you're ready to hook it back to your chain. So realistically what I like doing too is where the pendulum uh, hooks on. I like to take this off because usually, especially your smaller cases, they'll get caught on the side of here when you're taking the works out and you're trying to be careful with the cuckoo bird and it's just easier to take it off. And what I found what I found is usually where it swings on, this here needs to be opened up a little bit here because it doesn't like just sliding through. So just put your screwdriver in there, give it a little twist or something, and now you, you should be able to get that off of there by lifting up through. I guess my hands are in the way, but there we go. And normally the rod, this part has to come through this other wire that the pendulum swings on because this is usually too fat here you see a little bit of rust there which surprises me because like I said the chain is so clean but anyway this has been smashed in order to make it work on here right and it does not want to go through this hole down here so that's why you pull it up through the ne next thing I'm going to do is take the whistle box out and it's got a nail and a screw and what the nail is for is to keep the whistle box from tipping back and forth when it's cuckooing the screw doesn't always do it so you want to when you re reinstall it to make sure to catch that nail first before you start putting the screw into the whistle box. Now normally these are not glued in. Every once in a while I'll find one where someone glued it in. I don't understand why because they have they have a anyway they have the screw and the nail in it why are you gluing it together? So usually this here is loose enough. I don't know if you can see in there or not. Usually these are loose enough that they just pop right out. And that's a... This type rod here, push rod, actually has a loop. And that's it. So this lever here that pushes on the lift rod, that's the one I'm going to open up a little bit. Just put the screwdriver in there, give it a little bit of a twist. It's nice to have a bunch of different screwdrivers too. So 
So we got it off. You can see that end is around. Now that you have it off and you can look, check for sure, don't lift this bellow up too far because this isn't used to being opened up that, that far and those will rip right out of here and you have to put new paper on here or buy a new uh, bellow so the whistle box will work. Also you want to pay attention to these rods these lift wires because these lift wires sometimes are two different sizes and so you want to make sure that you get the right one on the right side so if you want to right now take a rubber band and rubber band it together on there okay let me go ahead and get this other one taken out. Say it's nice to have different size screwdrivers. The real fine point is one that you're going to probably want to get because there's a lot of screws that does not like a fatter screwdriver. The end that, that takes it apart. Now these screws that come out of these whistle boxes I've done enough I don't worry about it but normally when I take it out and I get that whistle box out I'll screw this into the box so I remember that's the one that goes to the whistle box so here I, I pull it out a little bit and I take the screwdriver and just slide it so slide it right where the nail is so it comes right off so here again I need to open this up so I can get the wire off here you can check your this is the hinge side and you want to check that make sure it's not cracked this all looks pretty good besides being dusty and let me look real quick so the one on the right side happens to have a shorter wire than the one that's on the left side here also if you're worried that is some cheap wire. I made these bellow clips and normally when you get these clocks they're they've been left on their face and they'll be sitting open like this. These things here are nice. You can put them on there and they will keep the thing closed and redesign it to being shut all the time. And these are good for shipping and for storing. I've got a video on that. Let's see if you can see that. It's just some cheap wire. Very easy to bend shut, to open up, whatever it takes. And these are rounded here so they can just slide right over the bellow. And normally you're seeing it looking at the back of the bellow when you open up your clock you can put it on this way too for shipping or storing so anyway now that I got those out of the way you do have these nails sticking out here I prefer to take them and shove them out you don't necessarily have to take them off but I, I shove them so I don't get jabbed and you don't have to shove them in all the way just get them out of your way so they don't get you that easily so I'll be right back I'm going to take those four screws out that are in, in here holding these works in so now that I got the four screws out like I said before, I got to be careful with the cuckoo bird. Make sure his door opening wire 
doesn't get hung up. And he came out okay. Or was it? Almost. There we go. And here's the chain that got hung up. As I don't know if you can see that or not, but it started hanging up onto the gear. There we go. So that's out of the way. So anyway, well, let's go ahead and take this bird off. You can kind of see where this bird is sitting on the wire, but that's not important because you're going to probably, you'll get the bird back on, but you're going to probably adjust it to the door. So he goes through the door in the center of the door. And also normally these birds are cocked crooked in order to uh, in order to get through the door I guess we'll say so you'll just play with that a little bit depend which one you have otherwise it takes a small screwdriver to loosen the screw don't take the screw all the way out and Here's the bird, filthy as can be. And filthy doesn't make any difference. You can clean it with a Dawn dishwashing soap and a toothbrush. And don't get carried away because you don't want to destroy the wires that actually open his mouth. And also, just another special note. Let's bring this a little closer on this bird. So anyway, on these birds, if this this bird didn't belong to this clock, and I had a new one, some of these tails are really long. And what you got to do is once he's in there, sometimes when he goes to try to come out, he'll hit the bellow on this side and he can't come out because he's stuck against it. And there is a line here. There's you just snip this back however far you have to in order for him to pass that bellow to get out to the cuckoo door. And you got to remember this bellow on this side has a lift wire that has to hit underneath here and you don't want to cut it so short now you just now you just messed up because it's so short and that bellow wire you're going to have to maybe move closer to this to try to get it to work. So don't get carried away on them when they're brand new. Just look and see, run it with the back door open and see whether this bird is actually having a problem or not. Okay, we got the works out. And I'm gonna to try to show you. Let's get the camera adjusted here. I don't know if you can see in there can you see all that dust that's just built up over the years? I mean, it is nasty inside here. And they do make a spray cleaner for the movements. For the people that don't want to take these things apart. I do have a video out when I was first doing this to show you that you can use just Dawn dishwash and soap and some hot water and let it soak in there and scrub with a toothbrush. Uh, it does take longer to get these things to work again, even though you've dried them off. And that's because where each one of these uh, gears or what do you want to call it, come through this frame, the old oil that's in there and dust might have turned to, to a shellac and you're not actually getting them that clean. Like I say, this thing here is just totally filthy inside. And so I'm going to take this one apart. But like I say, they do make a spray where you can just hose this thing down. And evidently, I've never used it, but evidently, that's all you have to do is hose it down, let it dry off, because it supposedly doesn't leave any residue. And then you'll go ahead and oil each one of these points that are on here. So that way your clock's re-oiled. 
But anyway, if you're going to dare take one of these apart, and like I say, if you don't pay hardly anything for the clock, who cares? At least you learned something. But you're going to, what you want to do is take a picture of every side. When you're taking a picture of the gears, you want to make sure to get the right angles in here. So you can see what that gear look like besides dirty. So that way you can get this thing back together again. Don't forget to take a picture of under here. Like I say, everywhere on here. Because, okay, which way did this uh, winder go on? And which side did it go on? Because you have two different winders. One's normally the cuckoo and one's normally the time. So like I say, the camera now is your best friend. Notice how filthy this is, just for where it was sticking through. They, I've seen bad, but this here is right next to the worst I've seen. So anyway, let me get my pictures taken, and I'm going to go ahead and take this one apart. Oh, and this one here. Oh, what's that say on there? It doesn't even say it's a regular. It says cuckoo clock manufacturer company incorporated Germany down here it says 100 slash 71 slash 28 whatever that means and normally if there's any markings at all it'll be on this back plate where the pendulum and everything is let me get a close-up if I can so you can read this yourself let me get it in the light too. So right down here's where the numbers are. Right here's where it says Cuckoo Clock Manufacturer. And that's the only thing that's on this movement. So anyway, let me get my pictures taken and I'll be right back. Got my pictures taken. Now the first thing you want to do is whatever you can take off on the outside, you want to take that off, set it in a pile but so you can see what it is that you took off. And then that way, when you go to clean this stuff, if you take it apart, when you go to clean this stuff, it gets a t intimidating because you'll have the gong, the two wire lift wires here, and all of this stuff. And then now you got to deal with the inside. So what I found, so it's not as intimidating, is taking this stuff off and getting a picture of it. So you know when it's time to put the works back together, you don't have all this stuff just screwing your mind up. You'll just take a deep breath and you can get it back together again. So anyway, as you're taking this stuff off too, maybe take it off in layers because it is hidden in here. And yeah, it's good to get a picture of the stuff in here. But if you're taking it off in layers, then it'll be easier for you to get this thing back together again. Take a picture of the spring wire. Normally, you're not going to take that off because it's kind of pressed in there a little bit. But take a picture of it so you know where this thing hooks up again on that lever there. So the first thing I'm going to do we're going to take this uh, cuckoo bird off of here. The, the spring wire just comes around it just have it wrapped over here. Make it a little bit easier. I'm separating this a little bit. So you can pop it out of there. You don't want to get carried away. You don't want those breaking off. 
Now that happens to be this tight. Usually these are screwed on here. And also when it goes to putting this back on, normally a spring only takes one full wrap and rehook it back on. And that's all the tension you need to get the cuckoo bird to open and close the door. And if it needs more, wrap it around one more time. So I got that off. And realistically, these are in the way. I keep hitting them. I don't want to... Uh, bend them up even though I can readjust them here you got another wire spring wire and it's on the gong so we'll go ahead and release it get it passed now the gong's moving around now normally these aren't sealed in like this is this here movement's gonna be more of a pill to me because you have all these uh E, e clamps or what they call those things and you got to be careful not to lose them you stick it in there usually there's a little bit of a a gap but you can get these things or get in the camera that you can get these things off with. And that one went to my first one, I do believe. Nope. That went to the gong. So now this one should be, there you go, pulled clear out. I'm going to go ahead and Take these other two off and then pull them at the same time. Now we can get those off. They do have slices in the plate for those that fit through. Oh, this is a nasty one. <laughs> like I said, it's almost like this thing's coated. To get some of this off here and show you. I don't know if this has been next to the kitchen or what, but that there's grease. That's another thing about these clocks. You don't want them too close to the kitchen because even if you use your exhaust fan, they still get all over inside the clock because the clock is open. And they do consider a cuckoo clock a dirty clock because of where the pendulum goes in, where the chains are continuously dragging up the dust from the house, uh, cat hair, dog hair, human hair. Uh, every time the cuckoo bird opens up, he's opening, opening up to the inside of your house. And like I say, that's kind of a bad thing in so many words. So anyway, let's go ahead and take these clamps off. Again, be careful not to... Let them go flying. This is the main one you got to watch for because it's holding down your snail. And pay attention because I don't know if this is that way or not, but sometimes underneath here, this will be a a barrel that isn't attached to the gear and you don't want to lose that barrel you gotta remember where it goes okay so Let's see what we can get off so far. This here is free. And I don't see a clip on the other side of it. So there you go. Let's see. This one's got a clip down there. This should come off now. Your snail. 
and this is what the thing drops down on this here is where it tells you or tells the clock what hour to how many times the cuckoo clear down to here where the 12 is then recess to one o'clock on okay this is the gear I was telling you about yep right here is a little Thing you got to worry about pay attention to you lose that and then you got to start stacking up little nuts or some something underneath there because you lost that piece and so me oh this here is the part that tells the clock to cuckoo on once or twice it whatever that snail gear tells it to but each one is the half hour and the hour and either side it doesn't make any difference it's going to tell it to just cuckoo and this here is the part that actually counts it spins around with this sitting in here and slowly moves it up until it has no more well this is actually hitting on this gear until it has no more and then it'll stop cuckooing that's what's supposed to happen with all this kind of gummed up feeling it probably wasn't dropping down like it's supposed to and this here is sometimes kind of a pain this type this here is supposed to let the cuckoo bird in or out and it all it's really stiff too so it was probably just flat out stuck so, the rest of this looks like it's going to be to take that off. Or I took the clip off. Or here it is on the back, I guess. So that one should come out. Turn that wheel around so I can get lift out of there. And this one here is right up against the plate in there. You may think it's going to be difficult. It's a little bit of a pill, but it's not that bad to get them back in, in from here. Okay, so that one's off. So now we should be able to lift this up and out of the way. And I, I know, but let's just get a picture of what this last part looks like. Because sometimes I forget I'm only human. And so now this gear should come out because we just took that clip out again it's got that lard all over it or whatever that is okay so now we got everything off yeah I know I got that clip on there that goes this counterbalance or whatever that goes to the bird but for now let me get these all Let me get all this stuff lined up, take a picture of it, because this is the stuff that all came off of here that once you're done cleaning it, if you took it apart, that you don't have to deal with it anymore because you just throw that aside. That's the last thing that's going to go on this clock. Now, as I was taking this apart, your works is going to be possibly different, but I'm giving you the ballpark of what to do with your clock, taking the pictures and that kind of stuff. And realistically, I'm not going to really show me taking this apart. The, the next thing I'm going to be doing is taking the nuts off. And I'll also take this off. This goes to that counterbalance for the bird. 
Actually, I'll just take it off now just to get it out of the way.